If I could have chosen a psalm to preach this week, it would have been Psalm 13. How long, O oh Lord? This agonizing question begins Psalm 13, a, a passage that has been my heart's cry as I agonized over the shooting of another unarmed black man at the hands of white officers, leaving him hospitalized and paralyzed. When Jacob Blake awoke from the surgery that saved his life but not his ability to walk, his father was holding him and he wept and cried into his father's arms, sobbing, why did they shoot me so many times, Dad? Why? In the aftermath of the shooting, the brutality and rage flooding across my screen has stirred in me at times despair and desperation. How long do we have to endure a duplicitous system that takes lethal action towards an empty-handed black man while offering gratitude and gifts to white men walking the streets with military-grade weapons and murderous intent? Jacob Blake and the terrible aftermath of the unraveling of Kenosha wasn't the only hard thing that happened this week. There was Hurricane Laura that devastated parts of Louisiana. And there was also the shocking loss of Chadwick Boseman to his battle with cancer, a hero on screen and off. This week, we saw the effects of unchecked political and religious power play out in the deplorable saga of the Falwells, folks whose intoxication with power have made a scandalous and public mockery of our faith. Honestly, these are only the things that have made the news. I know there's been sorrow for you this week, for things in your family life, there have been disappointments on the work front, financial hardships of many kinds, health issues that have taken turns that you hadn't imagined that they would take. We're still in the midst of pandemic life and, and all the struggles that that brings. And well, it's still 2020 with all its... So yeah, <laughs> it's been a Psalm 13 kind of week. And how long, O oh Lord, has been my prayerful refrain. With the psalmist, I have asked, how long? The psalmist takes a difficult but important and powerful turn in verses 5 and 6. He starts with two short but potent words, but I. It is important to note that in no way do these words negate the previous longing and grief, but they do indicate a choice and a turn towards agency that is critical to notice. Two small words with great significance. But I, right in the midst of all that has troubled me and you and us in our country, but I, agency, and choice, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. There is a tone of determined resolve, a persistence that refuses resignation and acknowledges the complexity of wholehearted worship that beckons us to bring sorrow and grief and praise. There's the holding of two different things together that are both true at once. Where the psalmist begins is not where the psalmist ends. All of it matters. All of it is worship. The book of Psalms ends with a call for everything that has breath to praise the Lord. Maybe you're still not ready for praise. The beauty of the Psalms is that they are sung communally, sung together. The people of Israel would express these words as one, meaning that even if someone may not have been feeling that particular Psalm in that particular moment, they would sing it nonetheless as an expression of solidarity and presence with those who were. That's what it looks like to rejoice with those who rejoice 
and to mourn with those who mourn. Given all the hardships of today and this week and this year, it may take time for some of us to get to praise from lament and grief. But being in the company of believers who are reminding us of the truth of God's reign may be the North Star we need and may be the exact strength for our journey that we've been longing for.